Microsoft has just released a preview of their newest operating system, Windows 8. So let me show you how you can download it and test it out without screwing up your computer. You should know that the Windows 8 user experience is going to be vastly different from Windows 7, Vista, or XP. And as we know from the release of Windows hmm. Vista, most Windows users despise any changes to their beloved Windows system. So if that makes you already hate Windows 8, then so be it. But my suggestion is to try it, learn it, and figure it out, then judge it. Because when it comes to technology, the last thing you want to do is be resistant to change. Because that's when you get left behind. That said, let's get Windows 8 up and running. In my experience, when trying out new software, it's best to run it in a virtual environment so that it doesn't screw up your system. So we're going to install Windows 8 in a virtual environment using VirtualBox, which you can find here. I've covered the installation of it before, so you can click here to watch one of those videos. Otherwise, I'm going to skip past it for this video. After you have it installed, you next need to download the Windows 8 Developer Preview, which you can find here. Any version is fine to download, but keep in mind that if you don't have a 64-bit processor, you can only download the 32-bit version. It's a really large file, so depending on your internet speed, this could take several hours to download. But when it's finished, start up VirtualBox and create a new virtual machine. Just call it Win8. And in the version type, choose Windows 7 or Windows 7 64-bit depending on which version you downloaded. Set the memory to at least 2 gigabytes if you can and create a new fixed hard drive that's at least 20 gigabytes in size. Then finish it and wait for the hard drive to be formatted, and this also might take a while. But when it's through, select the virtual machine and click Settings and Storage. Under IDE Controller, select the CD and change its location to point to the Windows 8 ISO image that we just downloaded. Then click OK and click Start. This will go through the installation process. Make sure that you choose Custom instead of Upgrade and install it to the hard drive that you just created. Then let it do its thing. Eventually it's going to ask you to log in using your Windows Live account. If you don't have one, it's easiest just to take a minute to go and create one and then log in with it. When setup is finished, the first thing that you'll see is the new start menu, which is part of what's called the Metro User Interface. And I know that you're probably thinking, what the crap is this? Well, the best way to get over the shock of the interface is not to think of it as a past Windows release, but to think of it more like an iPhone or Android operating system. So this would be your app screen. And you can access all of your most used apps from here. To launch an app, just left click on it. And to edit or remove it, just right click on it. To search for files or apps, just start typing or hit the Windows and F key on your keyboard to bring up the search bar. Then you can select which programs that you want to search through. So how do you get rid of an app once you've launched it? Where's the close button? Well, there isn't one. When apps aren't being used, they aren't closed, they're suspended. This is similar to how Android and iPhone apps work, so it creates for a much more fluid application launching and better memory management. But anyway, to get back to the app screen, you can just hit the Windows button and that will bring you back. This essentially serves as the home button like you would have on a smartphone. If you can't get any of your apps to launch, stay with me because I'll cover that in a second. If you click on your profile icon, you can edit it, log out, lock the computer, or add a new user. And there's a couple of cool quick access features that Windows 8 has. If you move your mouse over to the left hand side of the screen, you can access your recently opened applications and just click on them to reopen them. If you move your mouse to the lower left hand corner of the screen, you'll see a so-called charm menu pop up. This may look like the typical Windows Start menu, but it's not. The only similarities is that you can search from it as well, and if you click on Settings or hit Windows I on your keyboard, and then go to Power, this is currently the only way that you can shut down your computer from the Metro user interface. 
So where's the desktop? Well, it's under the desktop app. Just click on it or hit Windows M on your keyboard and it will bring up a Windows 7 looking desktop where you can navigate through your files and folders like you would normally. You can also play around with the new ribbon interface. Now, as I said earlier, if you're having problems launching any programs from your app screen, it's probably because your screen resolution is too low. So to change that, right click on the desktop and go to screen resolution. Then under the resolution drop down, select at least 1024 by 768 or larger. After applying these settings, your app should now launch. So play around with it, try different things and test it out and let me know how you like it because I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this. All right, be sure to check out Tinkernut.com on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.